Hello everyone. Today's video will be a summary of the intuitive full OLL series that I just did. And I want to cover three basic or three main topics in this in this video. And I didn't do a summary in my F2L video and I kind of wish I I had. So we're gonna cover some tips. I have a whole list of small little tips that you can do to might might make it a little better or faster. I want to talk about the next steps that I'm going to do to do some additional polish on the videos. Um, and then we're also going to talk about what the next series will be, and I need some input from you guys on that one. So let's get started. So we're going to talk about some general tips on how to get better at the cube and how to learn algs better. And uh, these are in no particular order. These are just notes that I had written down throughout the uh, throughout the series. And the I did want to mention, you know, I'm not some professional cuber. I have a couple hours a day to mess with this stuff, but I'm still around the 20 average mark. So all this is a grain of salt, but it, it might help somebody. First tip that I have is, and this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with OLO, but it does have to do with getting faster at F2L. If you grab a test cube, and these test cubes are, I, I checked the other day and they're like, five dollars but you can find some four dollar cubes online they're the su longs and the the gulongs and you just buy two of them and rip the stickers off one of them like you rip all the stickers off one of them and then you just replace the pieces where you need so you can have an oll tester and an f2l tester and then you can replace some of the black ones here with all of these and then you can just have a cross tester so with just two cubes or eight dollars worth of cube you can have plenty of different test cubes to do so if you scramble your cube up and solve your F2L pairs, as you're solving your cross or as you're solving your F2L, none of your last layer pieces are actually on the cube, so it's really easy to identify your two F2L pairs. So I just gave a little quick scramble and solved the cross, and you can tell that it's easy to identify all of the pieces that are just pairs, so it that's helped me in the past on, on getting better at my look ahead is it's easy to recognize the pairs as you see them so because there's not as many pieces on the, the cube so it's easy to recognize separate pairs and then you can also find a pair and then find your next pair and then do this pair while watching this pair because this is your orange green and orange green so we know how to solve this one so we're watching these two pieces and then you can notice that paired it up. So we find it, we, as soon as we do that, and then we find our next two set of pieces. And it's easy because there's not as many pieces on the cube. So here's, here's an edge piece, and here's, so here's a pair, and here's a pair, and here's a pair. So if you practice F2L on a test cube in particular, it, I think it helps because it removes a lot of the other clutter from the cube, and it really allows you to start working on some of your look ahead so you know exactly where your pairs are going to be as you solve them. So now I'm here. Now I'm here, so it's easier to it's easier to track the pieces because there's just not so much on the, and it teaches your brain to kind of ignore those those pieces. I am only human, and you know I'm not the best keeper in the world, so there might be a better alg for this case. There might be better algs for some of the cases that I showed you, and I really do encourage you to go to the speed solving wiki and start learning an alg. Don't do it on every single one, but pick one that you're, you just don't like the alg that you currently have for it, and learn every single case on the speed something wiki, and you will very quickly start to realize that it's easy to recognize when an alg is going to be good or not. As you do it, and if you can get it to maybe a sub two seconds, then you can, you can very quickly realize how good or bad an alg could be. And if you do that for you know a couple hundred algs is how many I learned just on the oh, then you know it's it's easy to start kind of we easily weeding out some of the the bad algs and it also teaches you how to learn algs quickly because you start mentally breaking them up into subsets of algs so you don't do the entire alg so in this case we have a you know our diagonal case and then here's our arrow so we're pointing an arrow this way and we're going to you know take it out sledgehammer and U2 and sledgehammer well. In order to do that, the real the subset of that is to take it out and sledgehammer. So that's the first subset of moves for that alg. And then the second subset is U2 sledgehammer. So try to start thinking about when you're doing these algs, instead of just that as a move, and then 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 that as a move. Start thinking of it in subsets that are a little different than you normally would, and it'll change your way that your your fingers work together. So it's easy to do a U2 sledgehammer. If you practice that, and if you start practicing those two moves in succession, then you'll you'll start to get good at those two moves in particular, and those two moves show up in a lot of different places. So you want to start 
trying to identify some common groups or sets of moves, and then just, just practice that. U2 sledgehammer. U2 sledgehammer. Who cares what your cube looks like? Just U2 sledgehammer. Just to get used to the finger moment, so when it's part of an AUG, you know, you it just happens and you don't have to think about it. Another thing I wanted to mention is always, if you get to a last layer step and you don't know what the AUG is, go look it up. Don't just do the easy case or do... Don't fall back to to look OL. Once you once you progress far enough in full OL, you don't ever want to say, okay, well, I don't know this case, so I'll just do the two look OL version of this, and I'll learn that later. Your brain works by consistency. So if you find a if you find a case where, well, I don't know what this one is. Well, then go go look up the alg for this. And what I would do is I would take a bunch of notes, and I'm, I'm going to try to get a cheat sheet. We'll talk about that later, but I'll, I'll try to get a cheat sheet so you can easily glance at a list, and it'll it'll show you every single way to solve every single alg from whatever position. So I'm trying to come up with that, but if you see an alg and you don't, know the, and you don't immediately know the right way to solve this case, go look it up and practice it until you get it. Because if you just say, okay, well, I'll just do two look... Oh well, for this one, and the next time I'll remember it. Well, then your brain will start to get confused on what you know or not. Give you an idea of what some of my notes looks like. I have, I have so many notes on every single case, right? And I'll try to consolidate that into a single cheat sheet for you guys. But I think it's important for you guys to take notes as you're doing it. So some of the ones that you don't quite remember, just write, you know, write down the algorithm, write down some little note on it. And if you don't, if you get to a case where you don't remember it, just take a second and go look at the note. So do some untimed solves, if you, especially if you get to the OL case, go go look up the, the case if you don't know it, because that's the only really way that you're going to learn it. Another uh, tip that I have is, and this one's kind of basic, but get a decent cube. It doesn't have to be some $25 cube, but a $4 test cube is not going to get you real fast at the cube. It will. It'll get you decent, but getting a good cube, especially for some of the end moves, some of these test cubes are, are a little rough and they don't, like this one, corn cuts alright, but this one's kind of terrible. You can hear it, you know, it's like, kind of locky in it. it, it's just not a good cube. So I, if you're, excuse me, so if you're, if you're to the point where you're learning full OL, oh, I suggest, you know, spend the 10 or 15 bucks and, and get the decent cube because it's entirely worth it. It changes the experience completely. Another tip is, um, it's easy to figure out what skip cases are going to be, and Every single OL case will cycle itself. So if you perform it enough times, it will cycle back to a solved state. So if you find yourself in a solved cube, and then you do a, we'll do the T1 or uh, the T2 case. So we'll take a pair out and then reinsert it. And we'll just keep doing that until the cube solves itself. And in this case, it's only a three cycle. Some are like 10 cycles, some are like 25 cycles. So each one is different, but every single one, if you continue to do it, it will cycle itself around to solve the cube. So in order to determine what skip case you're going to get, just do the inverse of that, and then you'll see, oh, well, here's my T2 case, and then my skip case is, it looks like I have a pair here, and it looks like I have a pair here. So this is the green, red, yellow pair, and this is the blue, yellow, orange pair. So in, in this scenario, there's also a pair sitting sideways here. So you know if your skip case, if you get it like this, well, you don't want to perform it on this end, because that will break up this pair. So you want to put your pair in the back. So you, it's easy to determine what the skip cases are, if, but you need to take time to do it. So you need to do the inverse of the case from a solved state, and then look at the cube and see if there's a way to identify how to how to get the skip. And some of them are easy, some of them are almost impossible to tell, really. Uh, but so a lot of them are, are easy to recognize, and it's not like it will make you that much faster, honestly, but it will, if you know that there is a easy way to get a skip, then you might as well learn that one little thing to, to guarantee the skip in certain cases. So the last couple things I want to mention is if you, like I spend a lot of time just doing all cases recently, but when I was doing the F2L series, I just did F2L and I would practice and drill and drill and drill and drill and that's really the only way that you're going to get fast at a ALG and how I learn ALGs is I will go to the speed solving wiki, I'll send a, I'll put a link in the description so there's a site called alg.cubing.net and it generates a solution for a certain algorithm and it shows you on the cube how it's, how it's doing it and when I was learning all these algs I would just slowly do it 
along with them, and so I so I wouldn't even look at the algorithm, I would just look at the image of what they were doing and, and mimic their movements. And so I understood what the pieces were doing, and then I would look at the alg, and then I would write down the alg. So when I learn, I don't learn algorithm-based. I learn based on what, what I see and then how I understand how the pieces are moving on the cube, and that just works better for me. Some people are better at just algorithm memorization. But if you, if you learn it that way, then you start taking notes. Then you're taking personal notes on how the individual cases are being solved, then you know you make those mental connections to 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 learn the case a little better. But the only way to get fast at an alg, so especially uh, with these kind of algs, so this alg where you have a U2s and sledgehammers and then maybe some M moves, then really the only way to get fast at those algs, to get it within a, a second and a half or two seconds, I think is realistic for me. And some of them you can sub one pretty easy, but you know sub one and a half is a, a decent goal for most of the logs then you just have to drill it. You just have to practice it over and over and over and over and over again until you... because you, when you do it a hundred times in a row, you start to notice the efficiencies that you can pick up by pulling here or pushing like this. Or So you start to notice ways to optimize the algorithm, optimize your finger movements in ways that you normally want it if you just memorized an alg and you did it 10 or 15 times and then the next time you saw it and you went and looked up the alg and, and did it. So I, I, I heavily suggest when you're learning a lot of logs, drill them. Drill them for, you know, that, do that the only thing that you do for 10, 15, 20 minutes. And you really, really get to learn the figure movements and uh, how to how to perform the alg and it, it makes it go pretty quick. So the next thing we're going to talk about is just next steps for me. I got a couple things to do before I start another series. I uh, told a couple people that I would go back and put some algs and some descriptions or as annotations on some of the more difficult cases, and especially on the advanced F2L series. I kind of dropped the ball on that. I didn't realize that some people just need algs. So I will be going through and, and trying to add algs to all of uh, my previous videos. So that's going to take a little bit to do. And I also want to create a like a printable cheat sheet that you guys can print out that has all the OL algs on them and then the alg that uh, solves it. And then maybe my personal notes like soon T1 case or take it out with a U2, insert it with a sledgehammer. You know, I have a little different notes than just an alg, but I'll, I'm going to try to organize a uh, just a piece of paper that you can print out that has all this stuff in it. So if you do come across an alg that, oh, I don't remember this one, you can look at a piece of paper and, and see it real quick. So it's you're not digging through 15 or 20 different pieces of notes like like I have. Uh, so those are some items on my list of things to do and I also want to leave uh, links to the alg.cubing.net site for some of the more difficult ones so you can see how the cube is doing and you don't need to rewatch the video or parts of the video over and over and over again. I know that's a pain for some people. Uh, I just I just don't have time right now to do it so that's it's in my list of things that I'm going to be doing over the next couple weeks. And the next thing we're going to talk about is where does the channel go from here? Uh, the whole reason I've done these videos is I think there is a space for the content that I provide. And a lot of people have requested the PLL series, and I'm not sure that I will ever do a PLL series. Because for the advanced F2L, I didn't think anybody taught it that way. And then for intuitive F2L, nobody really taught it the way that I, I thought was sufficient. So that's why I am creating these series, honestly. So, but when it comes to PLL, there's so many really fantastic videos out there for PLL that I don't know how much I could add, like how much value I could add to the community by creating a PLL series. And honestly, these series take a lot of work. I mean, I'm, every five minutes of video, you're looking at three or four hours worth of effort for rendering and editing and, and actually making the video and uploading and creating the notes and doing the research. So it, it, these things take a lot of time to do and I don't mind doing it, but I want to make sure that my time is vested in something that's going to actually help the community. So the two options I have right now, or there are three, I want to do one on uh, edge orientation, so how to do some more advanced EO stuff, because I personally I want to learn more EO and I figured while I'm doing it, might as well teach everybody. Uh, I also want to do a cross video. I think there is a definite lack of decent content on uh, cross information, especially X-Cross, and I, I personally have a terrible cross. I have, like, my worst part of doing the cube is the cross for me, so I really want to get better at that, and I think 
that will a video series on that will force me to get better on it. And then there's also a PLL series. I've I've watched almost every PLL video there is that exists on YouTube at this point. And I believe that most PLLs are pretty pinned down and, and people know what they're doing and how to execute them. But there's a couple variations and alterations that I use that I haven't seen anywhere online. So I might add a PLL series, but I might just say, okay, for this case, like the J cases I do different than most people, and the A cases I do a little different than, than most people. So I don't know if it's necessarily better or not, it's just a different way to solve the case that's still effective. So I might do a, a subset of a PLL just to show those cases, but I don't know if I'll do a full PLL series. It really kind of depends on you guys. If you could comment or leave, a, leave something in the description or in the comment section saying what you would prefer, because it, it'll either be cross or PLL, and I'm kind of torn on PLL. I kind of want to do cross, but if you guys want a PLL series, then, then I can do that as well. Uh, but I'm going to do it on my terms. So the reason I would ever do a PLL series is I would I would make sure that it's you know up to the quality that I like. So it would take me quite a while to research and and kind of organize the series and do everything that I need. And one last thing I wanted to mention is one of the reasons I'm I'm thinking about just delaying a series for a while is I don't ever have any time to practice. I spend all of my time messing with videos and all, all my free time that I have dedicated to cubing, I spend doing video series. So I don't really have any time to practice, so my speed isn't really increasing at all, and I really want to get a sub-15. That's my personal goal. I think with my free time, I can get to be a uh, average of sub-15 solver, but I just don't have the time to practice, and it takes time to, to sit down and do it. So that's one. I'm a little reticent on starting another series because of that. So either way, uh, if you guys let me know what what you think below, and I'll take that in consideration on what kind of series the the next one will be. But either way, it will be maybe a month or a month and a half or two months out because I'll have to do my regular um, analysis and learning and research and, and notes and organization for it. So I know I'm a little more particular when it comes to some of those things, but you know, if, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the way that I prefer to do it. And one last thing to mention is I have been messing with a lot of larger cubes recently, and there is a noticeable lack of content for large cubes. And I don't know if that's just because there's just lack of interest or there's less people that, that do big cubes and, you know, are, are serious about big cubes. So if there is a lot of interest, then, it, I'm, you know, it's possible I might start doing some 4x4 or 5x5 um, tutorials. But it really depends on, it, you know, what you guys think. So if I get a lot of requests for it, then I'll, I'll do something on it. But... Uh, so let me know your thoughts below if you guys even care about some of the, the larger uh, cubes. And right now, it should just be a 4x4 four four and 5x5. Five five. That's, that's as big as I'll go uh, currently. And I have no interest in 2x2 two two or Pyraminx or Mega Minx or any of that stuff. So basically, we'll, and really, 5x5 five five is less interesting to me too. So really, it would be 3x3 three three and 4x4, uh, four four, the two main kind of sets of videos I want to stick with currently. So let me know your thoughts in the, the comment section below. And I think that's it for these series. I did want to give a shout out to the people that have uh, commented on my videos. I know you don't have to, and it does mean a lot to me when I see, oh, this is great, or this helped me a lot. It makes me happy when I see those kind of comments. So I, I do appreciate the feedback. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the videos. And honestly, that's really the, the main reason that I'm even considering another series is people are actually getting value out of these. So I do appreciate all of your comments and 99.9% .9 of the feedback that I've got so far has been very, very positive. So, you know, it, it, it does make me feel good to, to see those kind of things. So if you have any questions or comments on the series or any notes or you know, whatever, just leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, happy cubing.